Welcome back to Love TV's Evening News. A fire in Roaring Creek Village in the Cayo District completely destroyed the home of 28-year-old Kendra Petch. Police investigations reveal that Petch left her home around 7.30 Saturday morning to visit her mother. Petch says she left a lit candle on top of the microwave. Shortly after arriving at her mother's house, Petch says she was informed that her house was on fire. The Belmopan Fire Department has confirmed that the lit candle was the cause of the fire. The house was not insured. The extradition hearing for 33-year-old Gary Sewell, who is wanted in the U.S. for drug trafficking, began today in Magistrate's Court. Gary and his brothers Mark and Dwayne are alleged to have imported cocaine to the U.S. through Mexico and sold marijuana in Texas between December 1994 and August 1997. They are alleged to have acquired over $1 million in drug proceeds to send to Houston, Texas, Lakeland, Florida, and Belize. Crown Counsel Magali Perdomo, who represented the Attorney General, tendered a bundle of documents into evidence on which the U.S. government is relying on to extradite Gary. Gary's attorney, Arthur Saldivar, said he is awaiting the decision of Justice John Nuria in the extradition hearing of Mark because he believes it will affect both Mark and Gary. Gary's hearing was adjourned until August 30th. Duane is serving time in the U.S. for drug trafficking. Cane farmers in the north continue to voice discontent with payments they are receiving. Correspondent Arturo Cantun reports from Orange Walk. Approximately 100 cane farmers made their way to the Belize Cane Farmers Association in Orange Walk Town this morning to present a letter requesting a special general meeting. Leading the cane farmers is Hector Melara. Melara told Love News the purpose of the meeting is to call for changes within the association. Well, actually, we are requesting a, a meeting, a, a special general membership meeting for them, for we to pass motions because um, there's a lot of things that's going on with this mismanagement. Because um, right now the money is one month and a half that has been has been in Belize, the fair trade money. Up to now, they don't have a pro, uh, program on how to disperse the fertilizer, actually, and. Um, in the 18 branches, that's $453,000 that it's used and the General Assembly has called to close those branches. So they are, that's money they're using. And the sales of sugar, the contract is eight years old. They have not renewed a contract with BSI and the replanting program. That's $4 million that due to the weather right now, no replanting can go, could go on. They, we are calling the meeting for them to use that money to change it and to put it on fertilizers or herbicides, pesticides. The next thing, they do a budget and they don't budget for pesticides for the cane farmers, for herbicides. They just, but for their budget, yes, they budget up to the pen they will use. But for the farmers, they don't foresee that for the, for, for the farmers. Melara says the cane farmers feel the finance and management committees within the association are inefficient and this has been the reason for the delays in assistance. How much money has been uh, put aside for the cane farmers from the fair trade assistance we've been receiving? It's 6.5 million for the cane farmers, yeah. 4 million is in the replanting program, 2 million of fertilizer, and 4 million, 463,000, that's on the SCPC, the kill to mill. And so far, nothing has been given to the cane farmers? So far, nothing. Only, only them. They have uh, good salaries, they have bad vehicles, they have bad ARVs, and up to now the camp farmers just cr cross their hands and just watching what they are doing. Love News also spoke with CEO of the BCFA, David Madrid. Madrid said he has received a letter from the cane farmers and has informed the directors of the request being made. I have received a letter from the farmers uh, with signatures and uh, certain requests under the protocol of the Sugar Act to call a special general meeting. They have met all the requirements, therefore I am sending a letter to the Committee of Management and requesting that they come in so that they can give these farmers a special general meeting so that they can uh, implement the processes what they want. They want to remove the six Committee of Management directors and they want to uh, also initiate some other programs for the farmers. What are some of those programs? They want to, to get the kill to mill. Um, they want to explicitly talk about the fertilizer program, the replanting program, 
So they want to do, uh, uh, get that implemented as quickly as possible. Let everybody know that, that we are processing this. Whatever the farmers want, I'm willing to do for the best interest of the farmers. Madrid says a total of 18 directors serve within the association, six of which serve in the management committee. If the request of changing directors is granted to the keen farmers, they would choose six from the remaining 12 directors. So far, a date has not been set for the special general meeting, but Madrid says it can be held by the middle of next week. Reporting for Love News from Orange Walk Town, I'm Arturo Cantun. Information for today's weather report is prepared by the National Meteorological Service. Moist and unstable conditions will continue to be the dominating factors in our weather. The early part of this week caused by a case of back-to-back -back tropical waves. The general forecast for Belize and her coastal waters is for generally cloudy skies with outbreaks of showers and thunderstorms over most areas, but especially along coastal and southern areas of the country. Winds over the open sea and along the coast will be easterly at 10 to 20 knots, with higher gusts near showers and thunderstorms. The sea state will be moderate, becoming locally rough at times. Operators of small craft are advised that they should exercise caution in rough seas. Low temperatures tonight will be around 77 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 72 degrees Fahrenheit inland and a cool 68 degrees Fahrenheit up in the hills. High temperatures on Tuesday will be around 88 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 91 degrees Fahrenheit inland and a comfortable 78 degrees Fahrenheit up at the exposed areas of the mountain Pine Ridge and along the Maya Mountains in the south. The tides, a low tide is now occurring. This will be followed by a high tide at 16 minutes past midnight in the morning. The sun will rise at 5.26 tomorrow morning. It will set at 6.31 tomorrow evening. Extended forecast valid through to Wednesday afternoon is for continuing cloudy skies with some showers and thunderstorms over most areas associated with the passage of a tropical wave. And that is the look at the weather with information provided by forecaster Catherine Cumberbatch at the Belize Weather Bureau. Information for today's weather report was prepared by the National Meteorological Service. Those are the stories we have for you today on Love Television. Thank you for joining us. I am Anju Gidwani. Have a good evening and a good night.